Hey everyone, so this weekend I went to the uh, 2014 Mike and Key uh, Hamfest and uh, Flea Market over in uh, Puyallup, Washington and I uh, just found some interesting things that I thought I'd share with you. Um, it's a pretty cool event, it's just you know a bunch of tables of uh, people selling random stuff. There's always interesting things there for uh, people, uh, you know, whether they're hams or not. I personally am not particularly interested in RF stuff, um, but uh, I certainly found my share of cool stuff. So, let's start with this one, probably the least interesting. It was free. Um, I picked it up for uh, basically the case, the, you know, the rack mount case and, uh, and just that. Inside, it's probably not too interesting, but we'll quickly tear this down later. Uh, let's see, I got a quite interesting tube. That would be a uh, 4CX350A. It is a ceramic vacuum tube. As you can see, there's no glass envelope. It is a 350-watt transmitter tube. It's uh, pretty interesting. Oh, that's how much I paid for it. Five bucks. Actually, no. Three bucks. Guy, uh, guy let it go for less. Anyway, as you can see, there's a built-in um, heat sink there. I got a little spool of magnet wire. Uh, I think that was a dollar. I got uh, four quite nice diodes. Uh, these are Sumtech SA uh, 7477s. They're uh, you know 10.4 kV at 4 amps. That's a lot of power. So I got a full bridge of those, which is nice. Some nice uh, high voltage, high power stuff. Um, this is free. Don't even know what it is. It appears to be maybe a stepper stepper motor or a weird synchronous motor, not entirely sure what. There's many wires coming out of that, maybe it's an encoder as well. But anyways, there's some valving or something. We'll take this apart, figure out what it is. Uh, let's see, this cute little thing is a uh, transmitter tube. This would be a, a VT286, or a, well it's an A32A is a more common term, or a common number. There's uh, two more in these boxes. The idea is that I have for them at least is to stick them on top of a, uh, a cool uh, audio amp. I'm not going to use them for RF. So just two of these, lit from below maybe. I think they'll look quite nice. Unfortunately, I found someone that had the same idea. Uh, <laughs> just happened to stumble across them when I was researching this tube after I got home. Uh, he already made a, a schematic and figured all uh, figured out. Uh, all the stuff needed to make it an audio amp, so that's pretty cool. Love the internet. So anyways, three of those total. Fan grill, not too interesting. And five bucks. This uh what is it, two by two by what is it? Two by forty. Two two lines by forty character standard um display driver. Uh L C D, which is pretty nice. No backlight, but pretty good anyways. So, I'm going to uh, quickly tear this down here. This would be a, a mixer or a combiner, I guess. I'm not too familiar with the terminology. I will read up on that and uh, fill you in and we'll tear this apart and see what the heck it is. Alright, so I've taken out all the case screws on the uh, combiner. Not much to it. Uh, looks to be entirely passive, which makes sense. There's no power connection for this. So yeah, looks like it just uh, jams a bunch of RF signals together. There's little ferrite beads here, a couple of windings, some resistors, some caps. And that's about it. The connectors are soldered directly through to the to the board. And that's it. Alright, let's have a look at this thing now. It's uh, kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure it has nothing at all to do with ham radio, despite being found at a ham radio swap meet. I'm pretty sure it's uh, either hydraulic or uh, pneumatic. But uh, anyways, let's, let's worry about that later and take a look at this motor now. I couldn't find air packs anywhere, but I did find that model number uh, under an Elenco catalog. And what this, uh, what this is, is a 7.5 degree per step stepper motor connected to a uh, 20 to 1 reduction gearbox. So uh, you get you know, some pretty nice torque coming out of here. And um, 
This is this is an eight wire stepper motor, and you might be wondering, well, what's an eight wire stepper motor? Because uh, I didn't realize exactly what it was when I was poking around at the data sheet. And basically, okay, quick refresher course on on stepper motors, right? So you've got your basic uh, unipolar stepper motor, um, which is basically a, you know coil here. Let's say you know it's a two two phase stepper motor. So you've got a coil here and a coil here. Uh, what makes a unipolar is you center tap the coil. So you've got wire coil, wire, and then more coil, and then wire. And, you know, you've got continuity between here and, uh, you know, either set of wires. Uh, and then you've got another identical setup down here. And, you know, the reason you might want this is because that the driver circuitry for a unipolar stepper motor is actually quite simple. You just uh, basically energize half the coil at once, and you don't actually have to reverse the direction of the current, which makes that, uh, which makes your driver circuitry a lot simpler. You don't have to use like an H-bridge or something like that. Uh, the downside is, of course, that you're only using half of the copper copper windings in your motor at any given time. So that hurts your efficiency and your torque. You only get about maybe 70% torque from such a configuration versus a uh, bipolar stepper motor, which basically dispenses with the uh, center tap. So you've just got you know one coil here with no center tap, just two wires, and then that again. But then with, with that, you have to reverse the direction of, of the current you know, for each step, so that uh, makes it a bit a bit harder to to deal with. But of course, it gives you much better efficiency, which is nice. Now, what this thing is is, uh, yeah, I said it was eight wires, so you might be wondering what those are. Well, uh, imagine if you basically uncommon, uncommonify, un well, if you split the common wire on each on each coil. So you've got two independent coils now. So you've got one coil here with its two wires and another coil here with its two wires and then, you know, two more down here. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to wire the motor in uh, one of four useful configurations. So um, if you want to have a unipolar stepper motor, well basically you could, you know, you could have, you could leave these two wires and, and use those and then take the middle two wires and connect them together uh, and you know use that connection and then you get a, a unipolar stepper motor. Uh, if you want to have a bipolar stepper motor, well you have a choice. You can either put these two coils in parallel and these two coils in parallel as well and that will get you uh, lower inductance because there's fewer total turns um, but lower efficiency so your torque per amp goes down uh, but the low inductance allows you to go faster if you instead uh, take the coils and wire them in series then you get greater efficiency but the higher inductance because of the uh, greater number of, of uh, turns uh, will hurt your high high RPM performance so you just kind of got to make a choice but having a uh, eight wire stepper motor like that you know allows you to do cool things like select the right mode of operation for whatever you know speed range you're in maybe or you can just stock this as a normal, you know, uh, part and just, you know, use it for the uh, application at hand so you can customize it a little bit, tune the motor. So let's uh, start taking this apart and uh, see what exactly this is. Oh, I should point out that um, if you see here the wiring for the stepper, there's four wires connected to a single wire. and. Uh, to me, that tells me that this is wired as a unipolar because they've they've shorted two of these and two of these, and uh, basically the, they've got five wires remaining that are not connected to anything. That's a total of six wires, and six wires usually means unipolar. Anyways, let's uh, take the spark. Let's take the remains of a looks like a barb connector off here. Nothing interesting in there. No, right, let's find out with this four wire devices. Oops, sorry about that. I'm wondering if this is a heat sink or oh I see. Oh, looks like it's a pressure sensor, some description. All right, well, here's the device more closely. Uh, there's the part number, and apparently it is a 0 to 15 PSI 
uh, pressure sensor from Honeywell. Uh, they're micro, uh, what do they call it? Let me scroll here. Micro, micro switch division. Done some description. And uh, here's the data sheet. So you can read that. Um, but basically, it's just a um, it's just a bridge configuration, and the resistance changes. Well, that's the price on Mauser. That's uh, yikes! You never know what you can find at these Hamfest things. Kind of thinking I'm going to put this on eBay now. I'll just test it, and yikes! All right, let's see what's in here. Oops. Just looks like a port. Maybe it was capped off. Take these guys out. All right. Well, I don't know what this is. Either it's a pressure. I don't think it's a pressure sensor. It might be a other pressure switch. You know, five psi, or uh, maybe an exhaust. I see those two ports up there. Maybe they just really wanted this thing to look like a pig. I don't know. Can't find. I can't find these guys. Can't find the part number. Uh, might take this apart if it's easy. But uh, you know, hydraulics are useful, or pneumatics are useful. So maybe not. Um, this is, from what I can tell, I can see the, the little coil peeking out of that little gap there. I can see some red windings, um, and I think this is a, a simple solenoid valve. So you've got. These are just mounting ports, actually. They seem to go all the way through without going anywhere. Eh, it's hard to tell. All right, so I did what I probably shouldn't do and ripped right through that goop. But uh, yeah, it appears that it's a three-way solenoid, which is pretty cool. I guess they just glued it right in there with some goop. That's going to be a pain if I ever want to reuse this. Uh, oops. Well, anyways. Um, anyways, so what this appears to be, now that I've looked at it, is a, um, a very accurate um, dispensing or a flow uh, control system. So this little thing, this hole is where the shaft that was attached to this sits. Where is the... Ah, here it is. So there's a little... There's threads on here. They screw into there. That gear went there, and you know it's turned by that really high ratio stepper motor plus an additional set of reduction, and that in turn hits. See if I can find my small screwdriver. That hits this spring-loaded thing, which is a tiny little needle valve. So I guess this is a. Uh, um, flow rate controller or uh, just very accurate uh, regulator or something of that description. I'm not up on my hydraulics. But uh, it didn't appear to use fluid, but you never know. It wasn't. Any, there's no residue that I can see anywhere apart from some grease. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Gotta love ham fests. I'm gonna try to put this thing back together, keep it as a unit. I might have a few uses for a, a really accurate uh, flow meter at some point. But uh, anyways, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, see you next time.